Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank. And welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning, right? I'm April Martinez. And I'm Sabrina Daly. And good morning, Belize. Thank you so much for joining us. Good it's morning, A. It's Friday. It is March 1st. It, it is the is. first day of March. It is the first day of Women's Month. It is the first day of Child Simulation Month. It is the first day of Cancer Awareness Month. It is a lot of firsts for March. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, and you know, what's interesting is that... Uh, on a regular year, as we've been mentioning, March 1st would have been yesterday. March 1st would have been yesterday, mm -hmm. and a lot of people celebrated their fourth birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw uh, this post on Twitter where uh, the United States was celebrating the birthday of a lady that turned 100 years old yesterday, oh, wow. but they were celebrating it as her 25th birthday. Oh, right. wow. <laughs> Which is technically right. Which is technically yeah. right. So she's 100 years old, wow. but she's actually 25. Wow. So she's young. So she, she, she's <laughs> young and old at the same time. Wow. Yeah. I wonder how to how people live their lives like that. I know. It's, really, really it's kind of like you get to celebrate twice, for, or you get to yeah. celebrate two things you know because the years are going by yeah. but she can only count it 25 times yeah that's really interesting that's cool yeah but yes uh, we do have a bunch of uh, things that we can touch on this morning as it relates to topics that are buzzing well i think what is buzzing are your shoes and i you and i <laughs> i personally was like she came in she performed <laughs> platform heels all the rage i absolutely love it and we were in here singing to spice girls because yeah. they look like uh, from the era of spice girls i really really love so them. so <laughs> i'll admit that i do have um zany uh, shoes yeah very I, I i have a, a bit of a unique taste you do yeah. i love it i love it a lot I, I'll, I'll admit but i i like it i yeah. i'm a really big fan of loafers yeah and i was telling you guys this morning that i remember uh, for my preschool graduation, oh, wow, my no. mom put me in something, something similar to you this. You can't see your show Look at that, you can. Spice Turn it girl. around, turn it around, <laughs> so that people can see the plaid. <laughs> yes, yes, it's giving. I love it. It's giving Spice singing? Girls. <laughs> what were we singing? We were if singing, you wanna be my, my lover, you gotta, you gotta get, get with my friends. <laughs> But it is giving the Spice Girl uh, feel, but what we were really discussing is that old things yes, come back in they style. they do come back. I, I mean, really like that. I know a few years uh, ago, you'd never catch people wearing stuff like this. <laughs> but you know, there was also this thing that was trending about how you can differentiate yeah. the the era or the generations based on your style. Yeah. Uh, you have, uh, now you have Gen Zers that are wearing more of like these bell bottom, yeah. uh, more well, free up, you know. I'm kind of there. <laughs> pants. Yeah. And then, you know, we're no longer in that era of skinny jeans like, like the millennials used to do or the high waisted yeah. jeans like the millennials used to do. Now it's a lot more more cargo pants and all of these bigger pants that mm -hmm. I think our moms yeah. used to wear when they were our age. And Absolutely. so it's just these old styles that are coming back in. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't want to encourage anyone to be a hoarder, but also save your clothing because <laughs> there's a good chance it's going to come back in style. Right back it's going to come right style. back around. <laughs> but I, I, I really found it really cute. And I, I, I mean, I don't know where you get at, but you have to hook me up because I No, really no. Like anyone that wants to know where to get the hookup, let me know and I'll give you the hookup. <laughs> oh, puns not intended. Any at all. <laughs> but yeah, that's just one of them. I love that we have the little uh, Spice Girl sound in the oh, background yes, like too for you Spice Girl lovers. I'm a Spice Girl lover. I'm a Spice Girl lover. Which Spice did you, you want to be? I liked Mel B. You liked Mel B? Yeah. I was Sporty Spice. I really, <laughs> even though I'm not sporty at all, I just really liked her style a lot. <laughs> but but yeah, moving into <laughs> other conversations other since I became a what's buzzing I, topic. I just felt like it was something to discuss. We were <laughs> talking about it all up to the theme song, all up till we said, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah. um, on to more serious uh, topics. Um, uh, 
or maybe we should go into one more good news. There's been there's been trending online the talks of going to Mars, as mm -hmm. we've been mentioning. And I remember last week we were talking about Mars as well. We're talking about the Moon and NASA and yes. making all of these uh, historic. Um, advancements in technology and as we also mentioned human beings we we want to go to mars yeah um and it's not even about the the fact that it's a it's a planet right next to us or anything like that um frequent studies about seeing if mars is is habitable or, mm -hmm. or livable um were happening for for many years now uh and all of that kind of came at the at the heels of climate change on earth and we wanted to see if if something happens to the earth, if it for some reason becomes uh, uninhabitable during our lifetime, that maybe perhaps we could move over to the planet next yeah. door. So what I saw on, again, social media was a post from uh, ABC News saying that uh, NASA is offering volunteers an otherworldly experience here on Earth. So they're not giving you guys a, a bus pass to go to Mars. But <laughs> Not yet, anyway. they are inviting participants or volunteers interested to eat, live, and communicate as if they were over 200 million miles away in space. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but... Um, I think it means if we want to see if we would be able to, to live on Mars, would you be able to handle mm -hmm. living in, in, a, in an area like that? You know, it, I don't know, because we're used to this greenery on Earth. We're used to uh, a particular scenery, a particular environment, and for what we know about the surface of Mars is that it definitely doesn't look like um, like Earth. It's yeah. very much uh, like a hazardous wasteland almost. I think it's going to be interesting to know who could take off uh, the amount of time that they need though, because <laughs> it's uh, for 378 days, the four-member team will live and work inside Mars Dune Alpha, a hundred a thousand and seven hundred square foot 3d printed habitat located at the johnson space center in houston so now that's more than a year exactly it's wow. more than a year who have time to give up a year well, you know you take a take a sabbatical <laughs> if you will for those people that can <laughs> exactly now i i want to know what's the space diet like you know because they're saying you're going to eat like you're on mars what are we going to be eating i think it's more like an astronaut diet where their foods are i don't know if you've ever had those uh um, those sodium packets, mm -hmm. those foods that are like vacuumed in so that you're able to preserve them for a really long time. They, they definitely don't look like the meals that you'd prepare and cook at home, that's yeah. for sure. So there's a, a, another part of the article that says, uh, to, accurately, to accurately simulate life on Mars, um, there would be limited food that could be pre-positioned or harvested on a real space mission. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if we were to actually live on Mars someday, you would have to send that food ahead of time. Wow. And you'd have to choose from that selection. Um, so there'd be no fresh food deliveries. <laughs> so of course team members <laughs> are limited to pre-packaged shelf-stable food and the ability to grow some crops during the mission. Wow. That's interesting. Is wow. it like preparing for a hurricane? It's like preparing for doomsday, yeah. really. It's like preparing for the fact that you might not be able to breathe a particular uh, type of air anymore. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty neat, though. I, I know that they've been working on these types of projects for, for many, many years, but for us as people that are not necessarily in the field or in the, the works of it all, it would be interesting to see how people serve vibe like i don't know if you and i could do something like that i don't even know if i could do something like that yeah I, that's that's wild yeah i could imagine the you know when they say um your your feel for a certain type of food or your 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 amok or your baby amok i could imagine coming back to earth and just wanting a fresh plate of rice and beans and chicken and salad that you there weren't was, able to eat there was a study done and <laughs> it's just kind of part in 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 line with this where you had uh two twin brothers mm -hmm. that well a pair of twins sorry a pair of twins that one is an astronaut and one is not and um they did this uh bio study to see how space and being in in outer space changed the the 
biological structure mm -hmm. of the person. And bef they did like a height and weight test before um, the brother, the astronaut, went into outer space. And they were same height, same weight, mm -hmm. everything before he left. And he left for a year and he came back and he was lighter. He was like not aging as quicker as his other brother. So his brother aged a little bit more with um, frown lines, gray hairs, and so forth, whereas he did not. Oh, it was wow. a very weird, um, well, I shouldn't say weird, but it was a very interesting study to see what that particular atmosphere does to the body. And yeah. so I'm very, very interested to see what would happen if yeah. somebody does that for an That's entire gonna year. That's going to be so interesting to find out the results, obviously, after... Uh, a little bit over a year when that person comes back. I'm, I, I want to see. I want to know. I hope we get the, the algorithm in our, <laughs> in our feed after a while. But Sabrina, moving on from outer space to bring it back home and center to, to us here um, on the ground in Belize. Um, I was talking to you all about what should we talk about for what's buzzing and so forth. And I realized that we are having um, a celebration for our culture and creatives tomorrow um, at the government house uh, here in, in, in Belize City. And it's more, it, it's called like a vendor market for the stakeholders, but it's more like a celebration to commemorate all of those that have worked in the creative economy, in the orange economy, the cultural mm -hmm. creative sector uh, for the past 20 years with Niche. Um, what I really appreciate about it is that they sent out the invitation call for anybody that would like to come and do a pop-up. And um, the, the persons, I think we have over 42, 45 vendors that are going to be out there showcasing their cultural creative um, works for the past. Some of them have been doing it for more than 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like a celebration for them. And of course, anybody is free to come and see what they have to offer. So that lady where you used to sell the trinkets by the side of Tourism Village, to the lady where does braid hair by the side of Tourism Village, sorry, the drum makers. We had a sculptor here the other day. Mm -hmm. All of these persons are going to come up, um, be at this vendor pop-up shop. Um, just to celebrate them, to celebrate their accomplishments for the past 20 odd years uh, being in the orange economy. You know what, I just, I have to commend the works of uh, the, the team over at Niche, uh, especially as it relates to one, the orange economy and persons that are working actively in preserving their culture. And yeah. I think we've been seeing that uh, strive for the last couple of years. I know because of you obviously <laughs> working over at Niche, but I have to commend you guys because we're really seeing these entrepreneurs get that type of recognition that they deserve. And I think back to the sculptor that we had mm -hmm. here on set and the generation of knowledge that he is uh, embodying. And the only way that we could, one, identify this and embrace it and give them their flowers is to highlight it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important and I have to commend you guys for the work that you've been doing. I want to encourage everyone who uh, saw the flyer to go out and support. I mean, yeah. aside from that, the orange economy also includes entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So it's also uh, uh, equally beneficial to go out and support our entrepreneurs. It's giving back to our yeah. economy giving back to Belizean businesses, and it's overall just a great act. Too. I think we talk a lot about supporting Belizean um, businesses. We talk a lot about buying and selling in Belize, um, and we seldomly do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about uh, supporting our creatives um, mm -hmm. in whatever concert, musicians. Um, just last night, uh, a commercial played uh, with one of our local Belizean artists and my mom was like, I really like this song. And, you know, she was jamming to it and I said to her, we have so, such amazing talent in this country. People that are still in the background that are not um, highlighted or praised as much. And so this is an opportunity for you all to, to come out and support your, your local Belizean creatives. Okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I think uh, that about does it for, for our, our What's Buzzing. What's There's a lot more buzzing. to talk about, but uh, we can keep it light for the next uh, couple of days as we continue to talk about the items and highlighting Belizean greatness yes. in our What's Buzzing section. All right, well, yeah. now moving into our <laughs> eye opener. And now, I have to tell you. Is I've it an been, eye opener? 
Yes, yeah, so, well, okay. I'm going to get to it. I've okay. been really <laughs> enjoying having these pre-eye openers with Paul. I know. Simply because he comes with kind of like his own eye opener before the actual eye opener. Yeah. And it's so encouraging because I think sometimes we take for granted the, uh, the importance of having a positive state of mind and, and really uh, enforcing that uh, consciously and intentionally thinking positively. And I think Paul embodies that. So this morning, <laughs> we'll be giving our very own eye opener, our very own Paul kind of eye opener instead of the official one. You know, when uh, our producer, Vianne, sent a message of uh, having uh, words of motivation from our host, the first thing I messaged her back was, I blame Paul. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I've been seeing that happening more and more uh, when he came back um, yeah. and hosting the show with you. and. I thought about this. This was giving me a lot of um, anxiety because really? I'm not the most positive person. And so I, I try to be every morning I wake up and I, and I say I'm going to, to try mm -hmm. to, to be happy about certain things and to be positive about certain things. But I, I don't embody that, that positive light that Paul normally brings, right? And yeah. so when she said that, I said, well, this is going to be the hard one for me. <laughs> so what do we have? What do we have? Let's start with you first. <laughs> All right. Well, I think for me, I, I'm a little bit different. I do consider myself to be a positive person, mm -hmm. but um, I think my struggle is to be present. Mm. Um, and that was uh, what I've been, what I was spending my evening thinking about yesterday and of course this morning. And uh, I, I really thought about where I'm at. I, I have my birthday coming up right mm. next month too. And uh, I've been thinking about the milestones that I've been able to achieve for the past few years. Um, uh, obviously things that I would have never dreamed about April. <laughs> Uh, I'd say a decade ago or, or a decade and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I don't spend enough time being in the present and enjoying each of uh, these moments that I've shared, both good and bad, because mm -hmm. they've been, there has been, uh, or there have been lessons that I've learned from each and every one of these little moments that have led to where I'm at right now. And um, I think my message to our viewers this morning is to try to be as present as you possibly can. And I know it's hard. Uh, it can be hard sometimes because you get caught up in what's taking place around you, yeah. both good and bad. Yeah. But even if it's only for five minutes or a minute of just being present and thinking about how far you've come or thinking about where you are right now, mm -hmm. I think it gives you a whole different uh, point of view, a whole different perspective on what life is light yeah. right now yeah. um the things that we take for granted i i and i i know that we always say that but we do, we do. take yeah. a lot for granted yeah. um i oftentimes tell my family uh my family members that i love them so much that i wouldn't trade them i told my 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 aunt my i call her my auntie mama and i got that from <laughs> i got that that uh phrase from my best friend but i call her my auntie mama and i spoke to my cousin last night and i told them I wouldn't trade them for a bag of chips, you know, like <laughs> they're so awesome. I love my family. Yeah. So for me, uh, I think my message, as I mentioned to our viewers this morning, is to just really take at least a minute of sitting where you are and uh, acknowledging what your reality is right now. And you'll, you'll, you'll actually find out that you have a lot more good than you might have thought. Yeah. So That's definitely crazy. take a moment take a minute to be in the present. And I think I, it was also important for me to come with that eye opener because I'm, I'm walking anxiety <laughs> and anxious people normally struggle to be in the present. So that's my eye opener for you guys this morning. <laughs> um, well, I guess for, for me, like I said, I do struggle to be positive. Yeah. Um, and I do wake up with that notion in my head that I need to try to be um, a little grateful mm -hmm. every day. Um, I try that I guess that would be my 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 message this morning um, I tend to dwell on the negative a lot and mm -hmm. whenever something bad happens my mind stays there and so I try to 
to, pl to pull out of that, I try to think about the good things that occur instead of just that one bad thing and try to be grateful for the good things that happen to me and to be thankful for the people that I have around me because I always say that um, I'm surrounded by a lot of love. Um, and I don't think I acknowledge that as much as I as, as much as I should. Yeah. And so for for me this morning, my motivational message is to do your best in trying to be as grateful for the good things in your life, for the good people in your life. Um, tell the people that you love that you love them yeah. um, sincerely too, um, and don't forget that. No matter how bad things get, there is always something good around the corner. Absolutely. That's my message this morning. I'll hold you to it every Friday now. Please do, because I tend to struggle <laughs> with that. <laughs> Alrighty, well, moving into our weather update for a second uh, eye opener. I, I, I would imagine that it's good weather. I, I feel like we're getting into that uh, hot season i felt it this morning so we do have that update from the folks over at the national meteorological service of belize francisca wellington with this report good morning generally fair conditions will support sunny skies with a few cloudy spells today and partly cloudy skies tonight showers will be isolated and this trend will continue saturday and saturday night winds today along the coast and over the open seas will blow from the east at 10 to 15 knots and seas will be choppy. Low tides will occur at 7.05 this morning and 8.32 tonight. High tides follow at 1 o'clock this afternoon and 2.36 tomorrow morning. Temperatures this afternoon will peak at 78 Fahrenheit up in the Maya Mountains, 85 along the coast and 90 inland. The moon will set at 9.47 this morning and sunset is at 5.59 this evening. In the sargasm forecast, satellite and surface observations show that sargasm amounts over the area are low and impacts are expected to be minimal for the next few days. And that's the latest from the Belize with the Bureau. Do have a pleasant day. All right, and thank you so much, Francisca, for that update. It's going to be good weather. It I'm, is. I'm looking forward to it. As the season gets warmer, please stay as hydrated as you possibly can. Moving on into our show lineup for this morning, our first conversation is with the International Network of Women in Business, better known as NIME, and they're going to be here to talk to us about the success and journey of women in business. And in our second segment, we'll be having Smart Over to talk about their deals and promotions. And in our third segment, you've seen them on our newscast, but now we're going to be having them here on our morning show, all about the rebranding of Kopali Rum. And in our final segment, it's all about the celebration of ecumenical uh, college, and they'll be, they'll be here on set to talk about their achievements so far and of course their anniversary. And to wrap up our show, we are going to maybe be featuring a, an Easter vacation idea. You don't want to miss that and more. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this commercial break. I'm David Humes, this is Vanessa Humes. We own Liverpool Cool Spot. Belize Bank save us a lot of time. Working with them, we can keep track exactly what we spend. But we recommend Belize Bank 100% because we don't have to go to stand up in line and we can check on our, our account right from our house. Working with Belize Bank is the best. One million sixty-seven thousand seven hundred slices of bacon are eaten by tourists each year, stimulating our local economy. Tourism means business. When police, the police department is, is taking firearms off the street, those firearms are not then diverted, but we are in fact destroying them. We're the young, we're 
Municipal elections 2024 are just around the corner and Channel 5 has you covered. The results of this decisive event will determine the direction taken by seven towns and two cities over the course of the next three years. Join us for nationwide election coverage with impartial and insightful commentary and up-to-date statistics. With correspondence in every municipality, get a first-hand look at the pulse of the nation as the elections unfold and while they can have their say this is my projection nine nine municipalities and it is not far-fetched we are going to go blue 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 down the line the voters will have their way tune in to channel 5 at 6 a.m on wednesday march 6 and stay with us until the winners are confirmed stay up to date with our pre-election coverage on news 5 Open your eyes and on our social media pages. Meet the candidates, follow them on the campaign trail, and have your say on the elections through our social media polls because your voice matters. Don't miss the excitement and drama of the municipal elections 2024. Tune in to Channel 5 and join us for unrivaled coverage that puts you in the heart of the action. Isani Cayetano, Marion Alley, Paul Lopez. Your News 5 police teams do whatever it takes. Go wherever they need to go so you can catch the story wherever you are, whenever you want, on whatever device. Channel 5 believes on television, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube because news is now everywhere, all the time. And so are we. Whether you're at home, on the road, at work, or at school, if you see news happening or suspect that something might be up, call or text the Channel 5 News Belize tip line at 672-5555. You don't have to give us your name, just give us the tip. That's 672-5555. Call or text us so we can check it out. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces the Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all that and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. Do you have information about a crime or a fugitive in our community? You can submit a tip anonymously with your smartphone using this program in safeguarding our community also protects your identity, keeping you out of the court system and could earn you a cash reward. Here is how it works. Download the free P3 Tips app from the Apple Store or Android Market. P3 is the provider of our secure anonymous tip collecting software. Open the app and create a PIN, but be sure to remember that number, then select your location. Next, select the type of crime. When submitting a tip, be as specific as possible. If you have a picture, video or audio that will help officers, you can upload them from your phone. Information leading to an arrest can earn you a cash reward of up to $1,000. Once your tip is submitted, you'll be given a tip ID and password. Check back if your tip leads to an arrest. You'll be told how much you were rewarded and how to anonymously collect your cash.
Welcome back. We are having our first conversation for the morning. And of course, it is with the international uh, international network, network of, of women, women in, in business. business. And they'll be here to talk about the success and journey of, of course, women in business. And we have here with us three lovely, lovely ladies. ladies Thank indeed. You. Uh, yes. What better way to start off women's months exactly we so uh, we're <laughs> going to give a brief introduction to the ladies that are here with us this morning we have here with us katia montenegro and she katia montenegro whore and she's the founder and president of nime and yesenia guerrera and she is the owner of yes's cuisine and of course there's miss shirleen williams and she is the owner of belizean sweets and treats wonderful ladies welcome. thank you so much thank for joining so much us much again and welcome Thank you for having us. Let's start off with the idea of Nime. What sprung about this particular concept of bringing all of these women in business together? So we, we started, as I was mentioning before, we started as a binational association mm -hmm. with the main objective of creating opportunities for women to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to bring together women from across the region to share experiences, knowledge, and best practices. Mm -hmm. In Belize, we found out that there was a large group of women in business that needed support, mm -hmm. and they were looking forward to having a community to exactly do that, to share mm -hmm. experiences, to talk about the issues that, affect, uh, that are affecting women today. Mm -hmm. So we created NIME with specifically that objective, to create opportunities for women to grow their businesses, to uh, raise awareness among our members for social inclusion, leadership opportunities, mm -hmm. gender equality, mm -hmm. and women's rights. Mm -hmm. And of course, to provide more opportunities for participation in the ecosystem through our networks and alliances in the region. Wonderful. As it relates, uh, how many businesses uh, uh, owned by women do you guys support? You know, it has been a really interesting journey. <laughs> we started without knowing if women will join the association mm -hmm. and it has been overwhelming. We started with five, 10, 15, and eventually we started to hear women wanting to join the, the wow. network. So far we have over 160 registered women owned businesses Wow! and we are present in the entire country of Belize. Uh, obviously, the participation in Belize City is, is stronger, mm -hmm. but we have in Corozal, Orange Walk, even you know, in, in, in the South where mm -hmm. the, the representation is sometimes a bit low, so we mm -hmm. do have across the region. You, you know what I think is interesting about this association is not only that you're able to support women in business, but you're able to see clusters of where these women are working, one, and the types of businesses that they have. Do you guys collect that type of data? Yes, we are working on collecting all this information, obviously for future projects. Yeah. And uh, we are specifically interested in creating more opportunities for women in rural areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rural areas, you know, Afro-descendants, indigenous mm -hmm. communities. And so we are in that process. We are only one year old. Okay. Wow. But, you know, uh, it has been an interesting process. And um, we have the collaboration of many leaders in yeah. within the association you know mm -hmm. and so yes we we are working towards that so this is like a, a non-for-profit organization That's correct. so how um do you go about uh creating these opportunities for these women what are some of the projects that you uh, have embarked in it has been a challenge <laughs> <laughs> so far we are working with voluntary funds from the founders themselves okay. uh, we have three main founders and now we have a board of directors of eight women that are also providing professional resources to grow the network. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our own members mm -hmm. contributing to creating opportunities. So after you know we do needs evaluation, then we know what are the topics that women want to hear and discuss. And we have our own professional network within the association that provides that opportunity to other women. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want to be a self-sustainable entity mm -hmm. and we need partnerships and collaborations with other organizations. We, we have done very well with the region within um, you know, the Federation of Organizations of Women in, in Business yeah. and also other entities that support women in business. But in Belize, we are working towards creating that partnership. Uh, the, the DFC, for example, was one of the first um, organizations that joined and okay. partnered with us. Mm -hmm. And we also now have the support of the Special Envoy for women and children that is also supporting Wonderful. us. Let's hear from our entrepreneurs. Let's hear from <laughs> our ladies. Miss Isenia, this is your first time on a morning show. 
and uh, you'll be he you're talking about your business, which is uh, Yes's Cuisine. Let's talk about what you do and uh, how you've been a part of Nime for how long. You can talk a bit about that. Good morning, everyone. Yes, Yes's Cuisine. Um, I'm the founder and owner of Yes's Cuisine. I ha I started as a catering service or a catering business with food, and uh, eventually during COVID, I I came into launching out the the line of hot sauce. Mm. So we now have Belize's finest signature hot sauce. We have 13 flavors. Wow! And uh, um, coming on to this, we have here our first uh, our first one of the starting line of dressings, which is honey mustard. Oh. Hi, um, being a member of Nime has been a very positive, and you know. It, it gives me a lot of support, the group itself mm -hmm. of women, of strong women, I must say. Mm -hmm. um, we all support each other. We hold hand in hand. We, if someone needs assistance or help or a feedback of something, we are all there to support each other. Um, how it has assisted me being inside of the group itself, networking. I would say networking has been the strength of this group. Yeah. And uh, we are all, as I said, we're all strong women. So if someone needs a little push or a help of somewhere, we are right there helping and assisting. So I have had great opportunities being in Nime. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful, beautiful women. Mm -hmm. they, they have also assisted you with giving that communication that you need to learn as in the opportunities as Ms. Katya had mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I have had uh, several opportunities including some scholarships, some two, oh, wow. three week scholarships to continue and continue the processing and the learning of my own business. Wow. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a woman in, in business, and this is a question for any of you ladies, um, when you're starting up and you're trying to get your hot sauce goings, we're going to talk about the sweet treats in a minute because I'm looking at some of them right now. Um, how do you feel you are received by society when you first launch a business? For, for me personally, um, for a woman to step out, businesses were normally owned by men. Mm -hmm. And for me, I wasn't taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, they told me that you belong in the home or you get a steady eight to five job and you take care of your children. Because running a business, it it, it takes a lot of work and mm -hmm. when when you work for an employee and you could say that you go to work eight to five and the work is done but for me at five o'clock my job as the owner of the business steps in mm -hmm. so it's a job that never really ends but it was kind of hard transitioning into the industry into entrepreneurship and actually being taken seriously some people dare to put a time factor on you that Within a year, you're going to collapse under the weight. So it was um, a burden, but because of the support group that Nime created, mm -hmm. um, we had a space, a positive space, to share our vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. um, we had that space to be open and honest with each other, and for those that have gone through it, mm -hmm. they um, contacted you inside the group and outside the group. You know what, Charlene, I'm rooting for you. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. I'm proud of you, Anne. It's just those little messages. I am mm -hmm. proud of you that resounds for you and it gives you a, a renewed burst of, of, of energy mm -hmm. to keep going. I love Let's that. talk a bit about your business, uh, Sweets and Treats. Yes. Um, since I've been here the last time, we have expanded mm -hmm. and um, I... 100% sign on to Nima's goal being a woman of impact. Um, we started out only with the sweets and after that being a woman of impact, being a woman of influence, it means not only serving your community but serving other women and since then if you see the products that are on the table, uh, some of them are not native to Belizean sweets and treats. Some of these are done by women that are in remote villages. Oh. Some of them are done by women that work behind the scenes mm -hmm. in their home, mm -hmm. but they do not have the knowledge or they do not even have the courage to go out and promote their items themselves. Yeah. So we took them under our wings. We formed a partnership that comes with the t-shirts. <laughs> um, 
So first of all, we were just talking about cultural creatives this I just, morning. I just know what and this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's not just sweets. It's Belizean grass roots. Sweet. When was the last time you had one yes, of um, course. My tableta or a coconut fudge or a cotto <coughs> brut. Like, those are, th this is, this is Belizean cuisine made by Belizeans. And that's now, the idea. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh huh. <laughs> Tell me what you think it says. It said go to market. Harry's picnic go to market two times. <laughs> <laughs> I know the read Creole. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. And that's just one a part of our collection. Um, we, other businesses, we hope to support them with that. Um, our slogan, we Creole have culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to promote it. Um, we're a melting pot. But when it comes to the Creole culture, it's being lost mm -hmm. under yeah. all other cultures. And I, I admire the other cultures for promoting their culture. But we, on the other hand, have to learn our heritage. We have mm -hmm. to be proud of our heritage and this is, press this is forward. Awesome. This is awesome. But I like this one here because it's, I look at it and I'm like, oh, pepitos. But that's not what it says. <clears throat> Makobi seed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I absolutely love it. It's it's fantastic, and it's like gratefully said. Yes. It's promoting your culture, Please, and it's not just um, a business, but it's yeah. A but so I remember. Business. I, love I remember when Miss Williams came here on set, and she was showcasing her business at least for the first time with me here, mm -hmm. and. Um, one of the biggest surprises I got, because I, I come from the River mm. Valley, so I know a lot about the grass roots, these streets, streets that uh -huh. are here, but I had never in my life <laughs> <laughs> heard about I, I this. I never want to say it on TV. <laughs> never in my life have Censor I heard <laughs> about a Belizean tree called that camera, that <laughs> goat, Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we do have various um, names it's for also other called fruits. Yeah, yes, yeah. Pinyones. So I, I'm not that surprised. I really wish you had like at least stretch my guts on the table. That would have A been little real. one is actually there. Really? Yes, Ooh. absolutely. Right in yes. front of the pepper yes. tambran. Oh my gosh, that's oh, totally blessed in there. I love stretch my guts. You know, I know I had stretch my guts since I'm in Alexander Tree or something like that. <laughs> Fantastic. But I think this is fantastic because, I mean, and we were just talking about this April, uh, ways that the orange economy uh, is preserving culture across the board. And we can see that, of course, in Ms. Charlene's business, uh, Sweets and Treats, uh, and also the other businesses that you support, for instance, like this, seeing Belizean, uh, 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 I guess, phrases being Creole placed on phrases shirts. and so forth. You know, that's, those are subtle ways that we keep our culture alive. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm really hoping that we continue on this trend. I want to go back, though, to Nime and the support that is being provided to these women. Uh, as you mentioned, you now have over 100 100. businesses owned by women uh, in this association. I want to ask, though, is, it, uh, is the opening extended to women that don't have registered business, but they mm -hmm. have little, you know, pop-up shops, mom yeah. and pop shops that, you know, they kind of do in their own little space is this association open to the more informal business owners? Yes, definitely. And we actually do have startups in, within the association. So the idea is to you know, uh, assist women in moving from the informal economy to the formal economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we have a startup, an idea, and you come to NIME, we want to help you grow that mm -hmm. idea. And with the support of the community, of course, that can happen. Yeah. I just wanted to share one thing before we move on, yeah. that the Belizean Suites, we had them at the last regional forum in the Dominican Republic. Oh, wow. And so Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, and so I was very proud to obviously take all this mm -hmm. funny names, and you know, people were so interested in what is this what and they how say do about do the goat it? Move. Uh, I was like, I don't think I want to do a translation for that. <laughs> I'm off duty translator yeah, today. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, and I, I was, um, you know, brainstorming with, with Charlene uh, in a previous occasion. How can we take you to this uh, events and have you making these sweets there yeah. live, Ooh. you know, to, to showcase the culture and to, to, you know, to, to bring that added value that Belize offers? Because we are part of the region, but we have a lot more to offer yeah. and probably the region doesn't know. It, and I'm so. sure that uh, the experience could be considered the same for you, Miss Isenia, 
uh, uh, taking on a huge step and bottling your products, you having over 10 uh, different flavors in your sauces, now even having uh, dressings as well. Uh, how, how big is this venture now since you've expanded your line to so many different flavors? When I, well, I can say from when I launched out in 2021, December 2021, I only had three to four flavors. Now coming on a long way to 13 flavors, I have learned a lot and I could, I could proudly say my Orange Orcanias and my Belize community, ever from yeah. north to south, I could say everywhere in Belize has, I have been um, accepted or, or, you know, people like it. I've yeah. gotten their feedback and I could, I'm so proud of our own Belizean and our Belizean products. You were a part of that um, women entrepreneurship with the, with the Taiwan yes. embassy. Yes. I, I'm, I'm looking at this logo. <laughs> I, like, I know I recognize this logo. Yes. Yeah, you were uh, fantastic was, in that. I, was yes. I also represented Belize and Taiwan mm -hmm. okay. in last year, February. Wow, yes. congratulations yes. to you too. <laughs> yes, I, I, like, I know this logo. <laughs> I've seen it. Yes, so your hot sauce is amazing. Where can we find your, your sauces? Um, Are you for now, I'm only local in Orange Walk. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm only at the local stores in Orange Rock, but if you want from anywhere else, Belmopan or Belize City, I send you BPMS. And um, I also have a gift box, which I have eight different flavors in a box, similar to a box that she has there mm -hmm. with, the, with mm -hmm. the presentation. And um, I, it, I can ship in anywhere too, and I can also maybe ship if you have a family member in the U.S. that also wants and I use it, uh, use the postal service. So I went back to the postal service. Yes. And it arrives in within, what, seven days. And how can they reach out to you? Um, my number to call is 635-8835. It's right there on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, before we, we, we start to slow things down and wrap up, Nime has been in a year existence in Belize. And you've collected 160 ad entrepreneurs. What are your future plans and the next steps for Nime? Definitely. Um, you know, strengthening the organization mm -hmm. and providing more uh, professional tools for the members to continue to grow. Okay. Providing more opportunities for uh, participation in the ecosystem and uh, just contributing to the economic yeah. development of Belize. And if persons would like to be a part of NIME, how can they do so? We have a website, uh, www.nimebelize.org. You can take a look at our page and find out more information about what we have to offer. And you can also send us an email and find out how you can become a member. Okay. For now, membership is free. Okay. Uh, eventually, you know, we will see how we structure the membership yeah. uh, tires. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Williams, uh, if persons would like to maybe purchase some of your items or can they uh, arrange catering for these treats? Yes, they can. How we, can they reach we out? We have had an influx of that recently. Um, people having parties no longer go for the chips and dips. Of course They not. would give our <laughs> treats in bags, but um, we still are located at 37 Fairweather Street, um, but we have a new location operating out of Girl Guides Association, oh, Kompong, nice. near St. John's Church, that is around the heritage yeah. site. Um, we have our WhatsApp catalog and we are online both on Facebook and Instagram. We also ship internationally. This is a part of our treasure box and you are able to, the, the, the treasure box, the, the, the actual name of it is on the top. It's called Taste Belize Treasure Box. Mm. And um, we actually ship that internationally and it's lovely that Mrs. Senya is here because we spoke in the past about the collaboration yes. that we could Perhaps actually have sauce. the treasure box and have Perhaps that sauce. sent so people will be able to customize their boxes not only for my business but all of the businesses in Nime and they could get a complete experience um, of what Belizeans have to offer. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? This would be the perfect gift for that family member that is homesick. The, in the diaspora, you know? yeah. Imagine though, you send them some money. This is when they, <laughs> this is when they asked for Ali Washington Union. This is what you can send. You know, I laugh about this some, one time. Um, I was having dinner with some folks that are, uh, you know, foreigners. And yeah. they looked at our money and they're like, it looks like Monopoly money. <laughs> <laughs> it's so colorful. <laughs> no, but this is fantastic, ladies. I, I have to say... 
a huge congratulations to you. Um, also, a huge congratulations <coughs> to Nime for the work that you've been able to achieve in just a year. Uh, the businesses, of course, owned by women that you've been able to bring together and provide support to. We can't wait to see what else will take place okay. a year from now. Yes, so congratulations. We hope to have you ladies back giving us the update about the businesses and, of course, the update on Nime. Thank, um, thank you so much, ladies. All the best. All thank the best. you. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about the anniversary of Ecumenical College. Stay with us. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Technology is ubiquitous, and it's transforming how, when, and where we work. Fulltech Systems is placing award-winning devices in the hands of information workers, allowing them to work without compromise in a world without wires, to innovate, create, and to maximize productivity anytime, anywhere. Satisfying the needs of the desk-centric remote and field worker and every other worker in between, we are providing the industry's best devices to businesses going through the process of digital transformation. Partner with us today to provide the solutions that will allow your employees to work effectively and efficiently to enhance your customer's experience. Fulltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. Forever Belize 2024 Vote PUP 11 Stay up on track Stay up on track Stay up on track And vote back Mr. Wagner Who always there with me Here we come for tree He's a good man, a man of his word, a man of God and The people's people, I don't know Somebody I know from, I was a little boy I'm on 2 King Street right there when he was in other record shop Hard working man. You know, man who listen to the people. The man on my street power was managed. On March 6th. One thing. Stay on track. Vote back. Bernard Wagner and the Belize City Council. Bernard Wagner. Demand for the job. Bernard Wagner. Win again. Bernard Wagner. On March 6th. Vote PUP. Bernard Wagner. Demand for the job. Bernard Wagner. Win again. Bernard Wagner. On March 6th. Vote PUP. This plan, I can't leave this plan. Smart Belize! Hey there, smart thinkers. We're turbocharging your mobile experience with Smart's powered up postpaid plans. Imagine a world where your data speeds flows faster than ever. Well, guess what? We've cranked up the dial and unleashed the postpaid power of Smart's lightning fast LTE data on all our postpaid plans. That's right, no speed bumps, more data. It's like having a limitless highway of data speed at your fingertips. Whether you're a lone ranger with an individual plan or a squad rolling with a group plan, everyone gets to surf, stream, and share at enhanced full high quality speed. Switch to Smart's Powered Up Postpaid Plans today and ride the wave of postpaid power. Visit any Smart Showroom or smart-bz.com for details and make your mobile experience smarter and faster. Smart, bringing people together. I know I can't let this plan. I can't let this plan. Everything is better electric. Be more efficient with electric vehicles and transforming your home with Energy Star electric appliances and power tools. This helps to create a greener and cleaner world for the next generation. Energize your world. The municipal elections 2024 are just around the corner and Channel 5 has you covered. 
The results of this decisive event will determine the direction taken by seven towns and two cities over the course of the next three years. Join us for nationwide election coverage with impartial and insightful commentary and up-to-date statistics. With correspondence in every municipality, get a first-hand look at the pulse of the nation as the elections unfold. And while they can have their say, This is my projection. Nine. Nine municipalities and it is not far-fetched. We are going to go blue, blue, blue down the line. The voters will have their way. Tune in to Channel 5 at 6 a.m. on Wednesday, March 6th and stay with us until the winners are confirmed. Stay up to date with our pre-election coverage on News 5, open your eyes and on our social media pages. Meet the candidates, follow them on the campaign trail and have your say on the elections through our social media polls because your voice matters. Don't miss the excitement and drama of the Municipal Elections 2024. Tune in to Channel 5 and join us for unrivaled coverage that puts you in the heart of the action. Welcome back. Joining us for our second conversation. It is all about the Stan Creek Ecumenical High School anniversary. Joining us to talk to us all about the celebrations coming up to my right, we have Principal Mr. Ray Lawrence and beside him we have Miss Derzeri Pascal. She is the committee member and alumni representative. To our left, we have Miss Erica Zhang. She is the English language teacher over there at Ecumenical High School. And beside her, we have none other than Miss Alberta Mayen, who was a past teacher. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> All right. So, happy anniversary to Stan Creek Ecumenical College. Celebrating 50 years. 50 yes, years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Establishing uh, excellence in the South for 50 years. Years. Let's talk about that journey, for instance. Who would like to take on that? Sure, I go first. Mm -hmm. um, good morning, and thank you all for having us. We are very grateful to Channel 5 for inviting us on to speak about our 50th anniversary. Um, this is an exciting time for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, accomplishing 50 years of superb education is something worth celebrating. Mm -hmm. Um, but a little bit about Stan Creek Ecumenical College. We are best known for an academic institution. Mm -hmm. um, I know you said earlier one of the best in the South, but I want to challenge us. I think the, the best yes. in the country. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. He, yeah. he, he, he went there. He, he went there. <laughs> We still want to try. You know what, this is your segment. <laughs> you do what you will, Mr. It Ray. Is the best. <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. Um, we recognize that we've impacted the lives of a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, a lot of our alumni are in very prominent positions across the country in the diaspora. And so we believe that um, this year uh, marks that celebration. It's important that we stop to um, reflect on where the institution have come over the years, yeah. but also to celebrate those accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, we've transitioned a little bit from back when we originated. Um, Ecumenical came about as the amalgamation of two other institutions, um, Stan Creek High and Aston High. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, as I said, we started as an academic institution, but now we have progressed into a uh, semi-academic vocational oh. institution. So we do focus okay. on the vocational subjects also. Wonderful. And recently with the change in the education focus, we are now fo focusing on competency-based education. Um, we are a very large institution. We have a population of over 950 students wow. with an employee staff of over 80, 80 plus, 80 wow. plus, yeah. So okay. we are a huge organization. Um, we recently launched the 50th anniversary celebration. The actual date of the um, opening of Stanford Ecumenical College was 2nd September 1974. So we are going to have this big bash 2nd September 2024. But on a dawn, the start advertise? Yes, imagine impacting <laughs> so many lives. So you have to start from now, now. because um, <laughs> a lot of our alumni are interested in coming to celebrate with us. Mm -hmm. And so they have to make plans well in advance. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing a series of activities leading 
up to that grand celebration and um mrs pasquale will speak to that a little bit later okay. all right all but right. i just wanted to give some perspective of the institution um, i'm sure channel 5 heard of Sanko Kek Pinnacle college because we came to billy city a number of times we've won the um, raspberry pie competition a number of times. <laughs> Very innovative institution. <laughs> no, no, I definitely, I've known Ecumenical College to be one of those institutions in the country that is uh, worth speaking about for its uh, contribution to academics. Right. So mm -hmm. I have to say I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, the reputation speaks for itself. Uh, the graduates, the alumni, uh, the, the level of success that they have had since graduating also speaks for mm -hmm. itself. I want to ask uh, uh, the, the other persons here, the ladies that we have here with us, both current and past uh, teachers, to speak about their journey as educators with this institution. Let's, talk, let's start with you, Ms. Desiree. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Belize. Um, thank you very much for having us. Uh, We're so pleased to be here. I have, I'm one of the, the alumni. I speak, I will speak on behalf of the Alumni Association mm -hmm. um, as a representative. Thanks to Mr. Lawrence and Mrs. Carlis. And I'm not the only person who is part of the steering committee as an alumni. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also have Ms. Desiree Rodriguez, who is also another Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's also working with me as part of the alumni as well. Um, I'm a graduate of 1995, so I represent 1995 graduates. Oh. The journey is interesting. Um, one of the first things we started to do was to try to get the alumni registered. So I want, I want to ask that um, all our alumni out there, we have a registration form. Mm -hmm. We're asking that they complete it so that we can complete our database. Um, data is important, mm -hmm. and we want to ensure that our data is accurate. Mm -hmm. So we're asking that they come out, um, register. We have it on our website, the school web page. And we also have it on our um, Facebook page, school Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It has been interesting to note that um, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of persons actually came out of ecumenical mm -hmm. in terms of um, their work ethics, where they are, where they're located throughout the country, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, in terms of our 1995 alumni, um, we try to get everybody involved, and they are from all over. Just that, just getting in touch with them alone makes it like an anniversary already, yeah. Yeah. Um, a celebration already. And so we are asking that um, the alumni just get in touch with us at our school, um, go on the Facebook page and register. The transition for me when it comes to the, the, the delivery, um, I won't be able to speak much of that because I'm no longer at the institution. But I know when I came out of there, I was very much... First, I have my teacher right in front of me. I came out, <laughs> I came out of, um, I did business. Miss mm -hmm. um, Erica will speak more when it, co when it comes to the, the streaming, but I was a business student and one of the best business students too because I have my teacher in front of me who is Mrs. Maya and she taught me um, business. We did accounting and I did, um, I also did office procedures, etc. So I came out of good hands and right now I am one of the productive school leader. I'm a school leader right now at mm -hmm. Light at the Valley Baptist School. Wow. And so whatever I garnered from ecumenical is testament of my production here today. Wonderful. She should Miss, be your spokesperson. I know. <laughs> <That's not laughs> your marketing. <laughs> Miss Alberta, though, we, we have to take it over to you because uh, we just heard words of, of, of you know, strong words speaking of, of your contribution mm -hmm. to a past student. Let's talk about your time as an educator at Ecumenical. Well, first of all, I'm proud to say that I was one of the pioneers at Ecumenical 1974. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first wow. teachers there. Wow. At, um, 18 and a half years old. And um, I have always, from, right from the onset, I always loved Ecumenical. And right up to this day, I retired in um, 2016. I was, mm -mm. I had to t actually tell Ecumenical, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> not call my phone number. Yes. <laughs> well, but they call it, but you come back right yes. now. <laughs> I still do because I go in and I mentor yeah. and all the rest. Wow. I was a business teacher. As a matter of fact, I was secretary for 10 years. Hmm. All right. Can't and, give it uh, up. Most of the time, mm -hmm. I, for, as a matter of fact, um, I was teaching and I was also the secretary. Oh, for wow. um, practically 10 years and then I went um, into the classroom thereafter and I stayed there so I have um, my journey through ecumenical was for 43 years what do you wow. think 
was uh, the factors uh, or the factor that set ecumenical apart from the other institution in that region? Um, I think that the, the, our staff was always a very strong one throughout the years, mm -hmm. all right? And so um, I think that that was what um, catapulted ecumenical into where it is at this time. Mm -hmm. The staff has always been strong. Mm -hmm. And I can say that because I have been there for so many years. Yeah. And I always tell them, make sure that your staff is on what young people would say, on fleek. Miss <laughs> <laughs> right. Alberta, did you just say <laughs> on fleek? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving, I'm here for it. We're doing all the things. But I, my, my question to, to you is because mm -hmm. you've been there for 40, you were there for 43 yes. years, you, yes. you basically saw its growth, oh, yes. right? What can you say were some of the, um, the highlights, but also some of the challenges that the school went through to be where it is today? Some of the highlights, our academic achievement mm -hmm. when we came up to Belize City and set up the bliss um, and um, for the the CXC awards, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are like 100 and something scholarships, etc. Our students were just, you know, hitting. It. And then um, when I look around in all the different business places, like what Miss Des had said, you know, um, we look around, and not only in the Stan Creek district, but throughout our country and throughout the world, mm -hmm. we have students mm -hmm. saying, I'm from Ecumenical. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm proud as a business teacher, I walk into um, a bank. And the manager there is one student. of my students, my past students. And they're like, they acknowledge me. And I'm like, yes, I walk up to the cashier. Um, that means you're going to line in a line faster than everybody else. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and she's also, the, the manager is also the class of, from the class of 1995. Right. I have to put that out there. That is one of the things they, uh, they, um, the CXC passes. Mm -hmm. And also to... Um, I think our leaders mm -hmm. that we had, uh, that we have had at Ecumenical and we still have at this time because Mr. Lawrence is very strong. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that between, um, with him and um, the other um, two vice principals, that they are still taking Ecumenical to a higher level, mm -hmm. all right? So I think our academic achievements, our staffing, our leaders, and even, uh, let me acknowledge the parents too, mm -hmm. all right? Because mm -hmm. over the years, parents have always stood up for ecumenical. I think and because they, they know support. of the reputation mm -hmm. already. Yes, mm -hmm. all right? Because like when it's time for, um, in April, when in the primary schools, mm -hmm. you will hear parents saying, I'm telling my child, they need to go to ecumenical. They have to go to ecumenical. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's we must be doing something school. good yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I okay. want to hear about, I know you. it's only till September, but mm -hmm. uh, since you all are here, that means plannings have been mm -hmm. going on from last year, getting everything ready for this anniversary. Let's hear from you, Miss Erica, about some of the activities that we can look forward to for this anniversary. <laughs> now, um, there's a lot of activities to look forward to. However, Miss um, Des will actually explain all those. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here actually to talk about um, the school and how we've transitioned. Yeah. Um, our transition started, um, I believe, with four streams. Mm -hmm. We had the business stream, we had the technical stream, we had arts, and we had science. Um, and I'm also proud to say that I'm a proud graduate of the class of 95. Just a little <laughs> so bit, you know. <laughs> and um, very cool. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> memory is that. Um, we were given <coughs> actually everything we needed as students to make better of ourselves. And um, um, Ms. Mayen, everybody has mentioned a lot. Like, there's barely anything for me to say. <laughs> but um, the staff, ever since then, um, they are very committed to what they are doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a technical student. Yeah. I'm a vocational student. And, um, we're still there, but ecumenical has come a long way where now it has transitioned and there are additional programs that mm -hmm. we see that are necessary to equip students for the future yeah. mm -hmm. so we've now included um the tourism field hospitality management and we see that um right now um the economicals for individuals who are 
knowledgeable in the tourism field and students actually have a way of making sure that they're able to share their knowledge based on what they have gained. Um, ecumenical has taught students now to become more um, self-dependent educationally, mm -hmm. whereby we have um, started the competency-based curriculum. And with that, um, you can see how children have now transitioned by ensuring that they are able to realize the problems that is going on in the society and they're able to actually make solutions to fix those mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. You can also see that they are now looking at their niche um, to say, okay, what do I need? What do I want to be in the future? Mm -hmm. And they come and they create that self-sustainable attitude towards academics and education. Mm -hmm. um, beside the academic at Ecumenical College, we also foster um, growth um, with growth and development with um, being sympathetic, caring, knowledgeable students. For instance, um, if we have people that are sick or ailing at our school, our children, our students, our administration, the staff, we normally come together and see how we can help mm -hmm. that student to get um, assistance now. Another thing, we excel a lot in sports. Mm -hmm. Every time our name is being That's called true. out there. We also participate in the pen release. That's mm -hmm. a national um, a national race that is run in Philadelphia. So we have students who go and and they also participate in that. Right now we're looking for individual to actually sponsor students to go for the pen release race. So if you um, have it in your heart to support the communicar, <laughs> then you can get in contact with us. Miss this is going to give you that number in a few. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we have come a long way, and our students are actually um, there, they're always on top, and we make sure that that happens as well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys, let's, let's talk, talk about, about the activities yes. for this 50th anniversary. Okay, um, there are several activities. We also have major activities that we are actually um, having, mm -hmm. or we have planned as an alumni. The, I wanted to start off by saying that we had <coughs> a launching, I think February 2nd, we had an, a launching to bring awareness as to what it is we're trying to do when it comes to celebrating our anniversary. Recently we had a, I think February 10th, mm -hmm. we had a past leaders and staff um, ceremony or an, an gala where mm -hmm. we actually, um, we were actually awarded and recognized our past leaders because we had several leaders to where we are today and we also had excellent teachers. Okay. So we did those activities, those are part of our celebration activities as well. Um, on the 16th, of this month, we also have a wine and cheese and wine, wine and cheese event mixer. Oh, fancy. Yes. <laughs> um, and so we're inviting our alumni again and the public, general yeah. public, because we, we, that, we don't only see our alumni as those who actually graduated. Mm -hmm. Once you attended ecumenical and you, you, you were taught by the, student, the teachers of ecumenical, you are also part of ecumenical. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. we're asking all those persons who have came out of ecumenical to get in touch with us and be a yeah. part of the activities that we have. So we have that on the 16th of February. Nice. Um, sorry. And then uh, March. And March. then we also go into other activities that is school-based. Mm -hmm. So while we are actually catering for our the general public as well, we also have activities that speak directly to our students because we also have to foster that growth and that um, ownership with our students. Mm -hmm. And so we have our, um, our we have a variety show at the school and we also have our relay. Mm -hmm. um, marathon <coughs> where the students will be involved we're asking our alumni to come out to be a part of it really as well um, and so we have several several activities you're gonna have to come back and tell where the ones before September yes yes <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> we're in March. yes yes <laughs> yes 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 are the ones that are wow. going to occur in the US yes okay. yes okay. yes we have we have the West Coast and East Coast gala as well so we're also reaching out to our wow. alumni in the states in um, Los Angeles as well as in New York as well. What? Yes, so we have. <laughs> you guys are celebrating. You guys are celebrating yes. big. Yes. Yes. It's everywhere. So I want to know um, one question that I had the moment you guys sat down. What up with the gift? <laughs> what? Is this, a, is this a present for I, us? I wish I could just offer it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, we will ask a question and we want to award it to Anybody who would who was watching, answer. okay. It doesn't have to be an alumni because okay. our um, supporters, our sponsors, you know, our donors are also part of um, St. Greek Ecumenical College. So, so for those that are on our question. Facebook, 
live right Thank now. You. Okay, so those that are watching on Facebook Live at Open Your Eyes BZ Facebook page, Open Your Eyes BZ Facebook page, uh, to be the first to answer this question, we'll walk away with this lovely present courtesy of Sand Creek Ecumenical College. Mr. Ray. Mrs. Chang will ask the question. Actually. Oh, all right. I have a question. But before I do that, I just want to, um, I forgot to mention that we also have a section that, that um, hosts evening division students. Mm -hmm. Those who drop out, we do that in the evening as well. So they're also part of the Finishing. alumni. So make sure that you include yourself in this big celebration. So our question is, who was the first principal? Who was the first principal at the Ecumenical? Who was the first principal at Ecumenical College? If you know who was the first principal at Ecumenical College, head on over to Open Your Eyes BZ Facebook page and be the first person to answer that question. We'll walk away with this lovely and we gift know, item. We know that alumni are watching. They're right watching. Now. They're, <laughs> so they're going to know. They are definitely know. But we want to say a big thank you to all of you. We'll announce the winner um, when we come back. But thank you all so much for coming by. I know we're going to come back again to announce other activities as the year, as the, the, the anniversary um, comes closer. But thank you all so much and happy mm -hmm. anniversary to Ecumenical College. Thank you so much. Yes. We're happy that you were able to have us. All and right. We thank all our supporters, our students, our staff, and everybody who has been great supporters of St. Critic Ecumenical College. And we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to stay in the South. We're going to head on over to PG and talk about Kapali Rum and their rebranding. Stay with us. <laughs> So many different styles of light bulbs, sometimes it's tricky to choose the right one. Whether it's a Sruin, candelabra base, or pins, we have what you need. From lamps to ceiling fans, floodlights or chandeliers, we have bulbs available in cool white, warm white, or daylight. All you have to do is choose. Once you have chosen your bulb, the final choice is technology. LED technology is energy efficient, long-lasting, produces a high-quality light, and saves you money. Choose wisely and let Benny's be your one-stop for lights. Benny's. Quality and saving. In Belize, there are 6,500 livestock producers. Together, they manage 200,000 head of cattle. Soon after entering office, the PUP government opened up the export of livestock. In 2023 alone, 40,000 head of cattle were sold to Mexico and Guatemala, generating $70 million in revenue. With the support of government, this revenue-generating industry will only grow year after year. These figures are important, but let's break it down. When the government supports its producers and finds sustainable markets for export, we improve the lives of our people. We build stronger communities. We grow our economy. We develop our country. It's as simple as that. And that is what good governance is all about. On March 6th, let us continue to move forward together. Stay on track with the PUP. Hi, my name is Lincoln Powers and I work at UMAL. 100% I will recommend Belize Bank Mobile Banking to everyone because it saves time, money, and gas price because gas price is high right now. Belize Bank Mobile Banking just makes life easier. I'm connected. Yo. I'm connected. We're connected. Create the perfect broadband bundle that fits your style with Smart Connect. With the Junior Bundle, get 50% off your national calls and up to 6 gigabytes of data at no extra cost. 
Get postpaid added for an additional cost of only $25 with the Prime Bundle. Stay connected with unlimited smart-to-smart -smart calls plus 6,300 megabytes of data and free international minutes. For the family, pay $28.13 more and get the Binge Watchers Bundle with Netflix. This bundle gives you four profiles with unlimited streaming on multiple devices. Visit a showroom near you to sign up and personalize your own bundle combination with Smart Connect. Smart, bringing people together. The municipal elections 2024 are just around the corner and Channel 5 has you covered. The results of this decisive event will determine the direction taken by seven towns and two cities over the course of the next three years. Join us for nationwide election coverage with impartial and insightful commentary and up-to-date statistics. With correspondents in every municipality, get a first-hand look at the pulse of the nation as the elections unfold. And while they can have their say, this is my projection, nine, nine municipalities and it is not far-fetched. We are going to go blue, blue, blue tongue line. The voters will have their way. Tune in to Channel 5 at 6 a.m. on Wednesday, March 6th and stay with us until the winners are confirmed. Stay up to date with our pre-election coverage on News 5. Open your eyes and on our social media pages. Meet the candidates. Follow them on the campaign trail and have your say on the elections through our social media polls because your voice matters. Don't miss the excitement and drama of the municipal elections 2024. Tune in to Channel 5 and join us for unrivaled coverage that puts you in the heart of the action. Welcome back. We are having our third conversation for the morning. And as April mentioned, we just traveled a bit more down south to PG, <laughs> where we will be talking about the rebranding of the Copali Rum. We have here with us marketing manager uh, Giovanni Alamia to talk to us about it. Good, good morning. morning. Hi, good morning. And welcome. Thank All the way from much. PG this morning? No, no, no. Belize City. Oh. Oh. Belize City. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Uh, before, we, before we even jump into what we have here on display, let's get a bit of a background of Copali Rum and the, the distillery available in PG. All right. Thank you again for having me. Um, you know, we, we're very excited about the way we're promoting the, our, the, the product mm -hmm. yeah. um, and also the way... Channel 5 and Open Your Eyes has always supported us mm -hmm. in, in the projects that we do. So, um, Kopali rum is a single estate rum. Uh, everything is grown on property. You know, the sugar cane, the cacao. Some of the cacao we do purchase from local producers, mm -hmm. trying to assist you know, um, the locals. Um, and it's the only rum that's USDA certified organic in Belize. right? The process we use for this is called, it's, called a it's a French process called rum agricole. Mm -hmm. mm. So we use sugarcane juice, not molasses, rainwater to proof it down, and yeast. That's it. Nice. No artificial coloring, no artificial flavoring. Uh, we have the white. We have the cacao infused. So again, the cacao is grown on property. Mm -hmm. uh, Sun-dried, roasted, and we immerse it in the rum for three months. We wow. take it out and then it, it, you um, run it through the pot still again mm -hmm. for it to come out clear. Mm. Yeah. It's a very sustainable way of, um, of making rum. And I know Kopali has always been um, climate friendly in, in the ways that it um, produces its rum. And I know that for this rebranding, you have a particular surprise for us. Right. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, like you mentioned, we, we, we're always thinking ahead of being sustainable mm -hmm. in, in everything that we do. Uh, so these new bottles are made of 100% recycled glass. Ooh. You know, the, 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 other, the other bottles that we had, you know. Uh, we have one here for, for show. Yeah. yeah. 
So, so the, this, was the, this was the old bottle. That's the old bottle. I mean, it's um, still pretty. <laughs> right. And I've, I've had some customers say, oh, the bottle, that bottle's sexy. I, I right? love this bottle. It's a beautiful bottle. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and I've had people say, well, oh, they see it on the shelf and they didn't realize it's Belizean made. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So again, this, with this bottle. newer bottle, we're taking it one step further mm -hmm. uh, with the 100% the recycled glass. Side by side. It's a lighter bottle. It is. Uh -huh. So then we're looking at when we export because we've been exporting mm -hmm. to, the, to, to the US, UK, and Europe uh, for about three years now. Uh, so then we're looking at weight because yep. you know, in the containers, we weight restricted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I, I, aside from the rebranding, I think it's worth mentioning um, other areas that uh, Copali has really shown to be a leader mm -hmm. in Belize, uh, especially in Punta Gorda. We've, we've, done, a, we've done quite a couple, quite a couple features, features on you guys. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was earlier this year or last year. Mm -hmm. And we showcased one of the most, I think, important things to mention is that Copali hires locals. locals. Right. And these locals are primarily from Punta Gorda. Mm -hmm. So you don't have people coming from different districts or Probably it's, it's little to none. But let's talk about the importance of including your locals in this process. Yeah. So actually, I'm the only person not from Punta Gorda, mm -hmm. from the Toledo <laughs> so district. little to none, yeah. you're in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> right? That, um, I mean, our, we have a master distiller, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, and they're doing some training. So then that could eventually be someone local, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, for the, for the, the company and the owner, it's very important because he wants to, to invest in the area mm -hmm. in Toledo, in PG, all the villages. You know, uh, right now we're harvesting, and between the the lodge, the farm, and the distillery, is about 300 employees. Wow! Right, so second to government alone in, mm -hmm. in in employment. And these are all people from Punta Gorda, as we mentioned. And I think, of course, you know, the second. Uh, most important point worth mentioning is, as you mentioned, April, the way that Kopali has remained sustainable mm -hmm. and climate friendly. Um, and I think it's so important for us to have a business like this showcasing that because when we send our products out, we know that it, it sends more than one message. It yeah. sends a message of, of uh, uh, climate resilience, of being eco-friendly, uh, of Blue showing color. that Belizeans can or Belize can create uh, products of quality and still give back to the community mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Right. What I appreciate about Kapali is that it's different and it can compete. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I've, I'm a... I am a fan, <laughs> but I really love that if I want to talk about Kapali, I just have to say cacao rum and everybody goes, what's that? Ho, ho, what do you mean cacao rum? Mm -hmm. And you kind of just shift gears to Kapali because it's the only one of its kind. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your three products and perhaps future products in the line, in the works. <laughs> Can we say that here yeah. at Open Your Eyes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we have the, the three lines like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the white. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we do two type of distillation. We have what we call a column still. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically, if you look at like a chimney shoot almost, with, with layers of, of filters. Mm -hmm. So as the distillery process is going, every layer is filtering out the impurities. Right. Then we have the pot still, which, you know, in the older days, olden days, you would see these big, big stills with pipes all over the place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, that's a slower process that leaves more flavor mm -hmm. right, so we use both mm -hmm. the white is is 75 percent column still 25 percent pot because we want to put in that leave that flavor the cacao same product but uh, that has the infusion of the the cacao itself mm -hmm. and then the, the the barrel rested what a lot of Belizeans call gold rum yeah right we actually rested in a barrel that was used for bourbon that's mm. why it tastes like whiskey right yeah. i i Sorry, I was. Just <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's a barrel that was used for one time for bourbon. Okay. They can only use it one time for the product to be, come out and be labeled a bourbon. Okay. You know, so then we, we purchase it and then we, we rest it in the barrel for, um, for 16 months. So that's wow. where the color comes from, that's where the, the flavor mm -hmm. that you, you mentioned, that's what all that comes from. Wow. So, 
We're going to be trying uh, <laughs> something here. <laughs> We're going to be trying uh, these uh, three items that you just uh, uh, described, the process of making it. Uh, as you mentioned, Kopali has uh, taken on a rebranding of sorts uh, with the look of the bottles, but I imagine the taste is going to be just, just as, as good, good as the last. Same, same great product, just a different packaging. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we start with? So you could start with the, <coughs> this, this first one is the white. Okay. Right. So what you will oh, notice, Sabrina. just take a little <laughs> smell first. In growing up, I don't know if you ever ever ate the, the raw sugar cane. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So as you smell it, you should be able to smell that. You mm -hmm. smell the cane. Uh, when the same thing when you do, do, take a little taste, you should be able to taste it as well. Um, you have that little grassy taste because again, this is completely yeah. organic. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So. Um are, are you ready? We're going to be doing <laughs> shots at, <laughs> doing shots at um, 8 o'clock in the morning. morning. That's fine. All right. So Cheers. Cheers. You're not joining us. No, no, later. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right. So what oh, you, sh very, what very you should notice, it's very smooth mm -hmm. going in. And then, of it course, when burn. it goes down, then you should really feel it, right? <laughs> are you you know? okay? So these, these are this... It's very good like in a mojito or a mm -hmm, daiquiri mm -hmm. because it, it doesn't overpower the mixes that you're putting in there. Oh, that yeah. sounds really good. I will say that um, the first taste that I got was the sweetness. Mm -hmm. And then as you mentioned, it, it went down smoothly and then it was like... Puff. Yeah, it right. was right there. Now it's, yeah. now it's here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, definitely. That's like if you have a if you have a cough, that's good for you right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do we have All here right, next? So then we'll do the, the cacao, which is the other the other clear one. Oh, mm -hmm. my favorite. Right. So again, that's infused with cacao. The cacao has because of the properties of the cacao itself. You know, it's oh, it's, you it's, smells it's, like smell that. chocolate. Right. You could smell. <laughs> smell the it smells chocolate. like chocolate. I tell you, it's my favorite one. I put this one time in a coffee. Basket. I was just going to yes. say that. April so, put that in coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like an like a espresso martini uh, wow. in your coffee. Yes, I could see that. You know, I, I drink this. Uh, I prefer drink this one with ginger ale. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Right? It just enhances the, the chocolate flavor. Yeah. Mm. Right? You, anything, the three of them go with anything citrus, coconut water. Yeah, it smells really good. All right, Serena. Again we go. Oh, again. <laughs> Cheers. This one is better. I love it. It's chocolatey. And what I really like about it is that it, the chocolate isn't so overpowering mm -hmm. that you don't know that it's alcohol, right? right. That one is smooth, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. you know. It, it goes down. You don't feel no. anything. I, I, that was good. my favorite one. Yeah. That was good. good. That's my favorite one so far. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> join the dark side, Sabrina. Join no. the dark side. <laughs> Next. Yeah, so then the other one is the, the barrel rested. You know, again, rested in, in a in an oak barrel that was used for bourbon. Mm -hmm. So you take that, the smell, you really smell. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you have that leather. You, you, you should like smell the Giovanni, leather smell. Giovanni, it's, it's only 8 o'clock, man. Like, it's not <laughs> even 8 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock somewhere in the world. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So, I, you know, the first time I had this, I, I had it, um, I think, with like, coconut water or something mm. and I said but it tastes like whiskey but now that you've mentioned the way that it's distilled it makes absolute sense. Yeah. Are you all, all right? right? <laughs> you, you, you ready? <laughs> I'll <laughs> have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Did I get a lime? <laughs> <laughs> it does not taste like tequila. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> definitely tastes like whiskey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, wow. Again, this is, you know, people drink it, this one with soda water and lime, mm -hmm. you know, a little dash of lime. You drink it on the rocks, you drink it neat. Mm -hmm. All know. three can you be drunk on the rocks and it's still smooth and nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at all the other imported rums, a lot of the, the more known imported rums, <clears throat> Uh, those are molasses-based rums, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So when you're drinking basically all evening, mm -hmm. or in your case, all morning, <laughs> starting from the morning, Thanks. right? Um, you're getting that sugar, yeah. that yeah. sugar intake. Yeah. So it, at night when you go to sleep, you have that crash. Yeah. You know, um, we always tell people this is, a, this is a rum made with sugar cane juice that doesn't have sugar. Mm -hmm. The, wow. Because the molasses is at the end of the product when they make sugar. So you're you're trying to say that this is a this is a great product for diabetics. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great product for anybody that has like 
dietary restrictions, it mm -hmm. looks like. But I, I do want to, to commend Kopale for taking on this new venture of thinking about the environment, thinking about climate resist, resilience, um, and rebranding. So this is the new brand bottle. It's, it's lovely. It's beautiful. Same structure because I have here the old bottle. It's, this is heavier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the same amount. It's beautiful. It's light. It still has that cork top that you know and love. Um, but just a little bit more conscious of the environment. Yeah, it's Wonderful. recycled. It's recycled yeah. glass. Beautiful. Well, thank you, you so know, much, Giovanni. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. You know, and, and again, we want to, to showcase that, you know, we can make top-of-the-line products yeah. in Belize. Yeah. And you've done yeah. that already. So, as you mentioned, uh, Kopali rum is accessible all over the country and even outside in the United States and the UK as well as Europe. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, right now, we're, we are in Florida, California, New York. Uh, we're finalizing about three more states, uh, and then again, UK and, and the EU countries as well. Yeah. What is the future for Kopali after this? Um, we are, any end this year, we'll launch another SKU, another, another product. Ooh. Uh, we have three more in line, but um, they're still debating when we will launch them. Okay. Uh, you know, so it, Make sure you come back here and, and <laughs> launch when you do that. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely <laughs> this, this is my first stop. Wonderful. All right. Thank Perfect. you, Johnny. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, for having us uh, try out some samples <laughs> of the new uh, drinks here. I'll tell you, I'm feeling quite light. You're happy. I'm You're feeling happy. light it's in this that cacao. It's the cacao rum. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Giovanni. But thank you. We're going to take our final break, and when we come back, we wrap things up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> So the doctor has given me five days off. How do I get paid from Social Security? This is how Social Security works for sickness benefits. First, you must check that you qualify. You must be employed when you got sick, have made 50 paid contributions, have made five paid contributions within 13 weeks immediately before getting sick. To ensure that your processing goes smoothly, be sure to complete and submit your claim form within 14 days of the first day of illness. Thanks, I get it now. Visit our website or contact any of our offices to have someone assist you. Also, be sure to visit our Facebook page and give us a like to stay informed. Social Security Board, safeguarding you, your family, your future. I'm David Humes, this is Vanessa Humes. We own Lady Pill Cool Spot. Belize Bank save us a lot of time. Working with them, we can keep track exactly what we spend. But we recommend Belize Bank 100% because we don't have to go to stand up in line and we can check on our, our account right from our house. Working with Belize Bank is the best. Smart thinkers, we're turbocharging your mobile experience with Smart's powered up postpaid plans. Imagine a world where your data speeds flows faster than ever. Well, guess what? We've cranked up the dial and unleashed the postpaid power of Smart's lightning fast LTE data on all our postpaid plans. That's right. No speed bumps, more data. It's like having a limitless highway of data speed at your fingertips. 
Whether you're a lone ranger with an individual plan or a squad rolling with a group plan, everyone gets to surf, stream, and share at enhanced full high quality speed. Switch to Smart's powered up postpaid plans today and ride the wave of postpaid power. Visit any Smart showroom or smart-bz.com for details and make your mobile experience smarter and faster. Smart, bringing people together. I know I can't let this plan go. I can't let this plan go. Isani Cayetano, Marion Alley, Paul Lopez. Your News 5 police teams do whatever it takes. Go wherever they need to go. So you can catch the story wherever you are, whenever you want, on whatever device. Channel 5 believes on television, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Because news is now everywhere, all the time. And so are we. For our other conversation, we are joined by Smart and Helping Hands, hand in hand, hand, in hand <laughs> Ministries. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> joining us in studio, we have Miss Adelaide Sabido, and she is the Public Relations Officer over at Smart, and of course, Miss Maggie Vargas. She is from Hand in Hand Ministries. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Good morning ladies. Good morning. So you're here once again. <laughs> it is Hand in Hand Ministries season because. <laughs> we do this every yes. year. Um, but Adelaide, before we get into the projects that have been happening, let's talk about what's happening over at SMART. Uh, well, we, we've we started March, right? And March, um, coming out of the month of love, we're going directly into another celebration at SMART. Uh, we are going to be celebrating our 19th anniversary. Oh, wow. This, uh, this March on March 26th. 29th and so we have a lot of different things going on um, gearing up towards that anniversary we start um, we start with doing some initiatives uh, in the community as today we start with child stimulation month so we will be working with several um, children several schools uh, to celebrate um, child, that child stimulation. child stimulation month we also um, have other PR initiatives geared towards sports and parks that we will be doing and launching out to you guys um, in a couple of days. Yes. All right, and to do that reveal. And then we also have the promotions that come with our mm -hmm. anniversary that we know people are looking yeah, forward to. It's a busy to. month. It, right, is, it a busy is a busy month. month. And then on the 15th, the 15th and the 16th of March, we will be at the Spanish Lookout Expo. Mm -hmm. um, that is a about a week and a half in from our anniversary as well. Mm -hmm. So there is every opportunity for the public to take advantage of deals. You know, you can go out to the Spanish Lookout Expo. You can wait a little bit more um, until the week of our anniversary to, uh, to take advantage of other promotional prices on all our services, not just phone sales. Yeah. All right. So... And I think throughout the month, there are several weekends uh, which will be communicated through social media and the text blast of specific sales happening in different rural areas, mm -hmm. right? We, we continue that um, campaign and in going out to the public mm -hmm. um, in areas, especially where we have transitioned over to the UMTS network to mm -hmm. get people upgraded um, on, on par with SMART. Yeah. Um, and then the big, <laughs> the big celebration on the which will be happening the March, 15, March fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth, I believe, um, that weekend is our partnership with Hand in Hand Ministries, where our staff will be fully immersed in participating in building a, a home. 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 Um, wow. And this is our second year mm -hmm. in partnering with Hand in Hand Ministries, specifically for the housing. Uh, program mm -hmm. that they have uh, last year was our first year it was new to us um, so you know 
following the protocol and the, and the different uh, steps in choosing a recipient wasn't too difficult because we had hand in hand um, guiding just come us off of Lisa, and uh, Hurricane Lisa <coughs> and all of that. Jazz. Right, and so doing the needs based assessment, meeting with the different mm -hmm. applicants, um, it was I think a little bit clearer to us in who was in most need at the time right. yeah. for a home. Um, our second time into it, it was a little bit more challenging in selecting one person. Wow. Yeah. Right? I, I think we, um, our staff got fully involved last year and so getting involved again, there was a greater urge or need to to be more involved like are we making the right decision, decision. um are we choosing yeah. based on needs first uh we and to make it even more complicated um we're not doing it in belize city we're oh. going to orange walk this year oh, wow. Uh, wow. with the hopes next year to go south um so That's we're going cool. to be touching um every area throughout this country hopefully um, in less than six years, I'm going to bite that bullet. We can, <laughs> we can do uh, every district. But um, this year was a little bit more challenging because we went to Orange Walk. You know, we visited the different applicants, and I think we were we had narrowed it down to four in the end, and then had, had to meet one. Mm -hmm. again and choose from that. Um, and so that was. Very challenging this year, I must yeah, say. Very challenging. Let's, let's let's get hand in hand ministries uh, in the conversation, mm -hmm. simply because this is this is something that you guys do. This is your mm -hmm. jobs. Right. You know, you you try to provide homes for persons that need it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine getting collaborative uh, organizations like Smart on team that are willing to put their hands at work as well mm -hmm. might mean a lot more than than we would think. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that partnership and why why it meant so much okay um we love the idea that smart came on board last year mm -hmm. we always love the ideas that local companies join <coughs> us because it gives us an, an an opportunity to go out outside of the norm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the most part during the course of the year we build homes in belize city 25 miles radius okay. that's the farthest we would go However, when we have local organizations such <coughs> as SMART, we get the opportunity to be able to go out district, like she mentioned. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and this partnership, we love it because they are on board from the beginning all the way to the end. Yeah. From looking at the applications, vetting the applications, the whole process. Mm -hmm. They're an integral part of this whole process. And that, mm -hmm. is what, that is the kind of partnership we look for. Yeah. Because honestly, when our, the local companies like them come on board, they get to see firsthand yeah. the needs out there. Yeah. Yeah. And why she mentioned earlier it was challenging, because when you look at the applicants, all of them are need. Yeah. All of them need. Yeah. All yeah. of them are in need. Yeah. However, they can only bill at that time for one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People ask what happens to the others. They go back into our pool. And when we get another opportunity, then that's when they come back in mm -hmm. and we revisit. We just, mm -hmm. just don't take that as face value because mm -hmm. people's situations change. Yes. And we have to do like a reassessment. But yeah. having that background already helps yeah. us to be able to know whether that person has actually made something of themselves. Because at the time when we meet these applicants, we ensure that we explain to them that we are, if we get to help them, we're going to help them, but they have to help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of what our program yeah. does. So let's get into um, the winner, the applicants, the winners, and how this achievement for the house um, was done. It's not just smart and hand in hands, but I also understand that the applicant puts mm -hmm. their hands into the cement and have to work as well. So let's talk well, about that. Prior to, uh, after the applicants are, uh, um, come, we, we find all the applicants, they need to be able to join us, mm -hmm. join our program, <coughs> help others build their homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At that point, even if they have not been fully chosen, that gives them an opportunity to show how hard they, they are willing to work right. for what they need. Mm -hmm. um, 
also that we allow the, 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 the applicants to join us the first Saturday of every month, even before they get their own homes. Wonderful. Come on board, we teach them last life skills. So even though we may not choose the applicant at that time, they get an op that opportunity to be able to learn stuff mm -hmm. on their own and implement it in their home because yeah. that's what we do in that program. We not only help you, we encourage you, we help you to be able to help yourself. Get the skills yeah. in. It's yeah. a full, it's, it's a win-win <coughs> situation for us, for those providing the funding, like SMART, and for those receiving the assistance. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So this year's winner, I know you said it was a little bit difficult to pick, mm -hmm. but let's talk about the winner. Let's talk about the results of this um, so on Saturday, we visited Guinea Grass. The recipient is in Guinea Grass. And I'm going to correct myself before Ms. Maggie does that. <laughs> um, I was informed that we won't refer to the, to the applicants as recipient mm -hmm. when they receive a home. Because hand in hand, you know, based on the program, it's a family unit. You know, they look out for each other. You're teaching um, these people that get the house to help and contribute and build homes for others. So this year's, um, I have to say, it, sorry, partner. this year's <laughs> partner, okay. <laughs> this year's partner is um, Sylvia Navarro, who lives in Guinea Grass in Orange Walk District. And uh, she takes care, or residing with her is her mother as well, and uh, her nine-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And so they are the recipient of the home this year. And they will be participating in mm -hmm. with smart employees to build that own home. Mm -hmm. This Saturday is her first Saturday where she will come to Belize City at Hand in Hand Ministries and participate in her first Saturday session. Mm -hmm. It will be 10 sessions that she is required to um, participate in. And um, hopefully in the, in, in the nearing months or the next house built project that hand in hand has she will also participate in building a home yeah. for mm -hmm. others and i must take mention that this is one of the primary reasons we chose to partner with hand in hand for this because it's i mean it doesn't happen as frequently as we would like but it's not just hand in hand that are giving homes to yeah. others but this program is there to our heart because it's not just Here's a home. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's equipping that person to be what I like to say very responsive and responsible citizens in their community. And yeah. that and to pay it forward. And, yeah. Right. And that is um, you know, teaching them to be of service to others as well. And while we want to improve ourselves, while it is our human right to have a safe home and a roof over our heads, um, it teach it teaches volumes and, you know, great um, community spirit when yeah. you are able to improve yourself your mm -hmm. life but also help others to go to improve with you well like i said this so. is the second year that mm -hmm. you all are partnering mm -hmm. um last year you did the the same thing with another resilient another partner in belize city um how has that been because i understand also that that person has to come in and assist helping ha hand in hand ministries right. as well with building homes um, we've been following up a little bit on uh, Francesca, mm -hmm. um, and I, I know she's been on this in the Saturday sessions. I know I well, it's been it's past the ten mm -hmm. Saturdays yes. already, so she's completed that. But it is our hope that she will join us, mm -hmm. the smart employees. It's three days for this year's house bill, so that an invitation will be extended to her to join on one of those days. If if three, if possible, mm -hmm. um, on her end, and you know, she would accompany, she would travel with smart employees from Belize City to go up to Orange Walk to be a part of that. Um, yeah. Miss Maggie mentioned this week as well that mm -hmm. you know, last year um, we over, I overstepped by encouraging <laughs> um, other companies like Smart to join with hand in hand <laughs> and um, and help. Uh -huh. for hand in hand to reach their goal <laughs> of building 500 homes and i am not sure if it was channel 5 or another reporter said you honestly believe that hand in hand can build 500 homes before the end of 2023 and i said absolutely with, with, full, right? confidence, with full confidence without consulting, without consulting. <laughs> and um lo and behold you know hand in hand completed that wow. mission in and uh, smart's home 
this second home is going to complete 507 oh. homes. So oh, we're so already at over. seven, 500 homes at the ending of December, and we're at our seventh home committed for yes. uh, up to March of wow. 2024. Congratulations. So, and just um, to add to what <laughs> Adelaide has been mentioning, you know, that program is a really good program because Absolutely. when we um, have make these partnerships with these people that we assist, mm -hmm. we don't, like she mentioned, we don't just give them a home and leave them there. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a follow-up. They, they stay with us for a period of 10 years. Wow. Because we follow them throughout that 10-year period. Mm -hmm. um, we, need, we try to ensure that when they came to us, the situation that they were, at the end of 10 years, they're no longer in that yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. They're in a much better situation. Uh -huh. So that's our goal. And in addition to that, last year, the 500 house that um, Adelaide was mentioning <laughs> was done by partners, mm -hmm. all of whom all we have built homes for, came together over a period wow. of four years. They raised the funds to, for a house. They did the whole process like the local companies. They were on board doing visits vetting applications and doing the whole nine years. That's I fantastic. think we had you guys here on set talking about that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and it's testament to, to the program itself to have all those partners who came through the program yeah. and grew with the program to come and say, hey, the 500 home, we want to build that, you know, That's and we want to be a part of that. So it's testament to the works. And um, the women that, that, in, that, that are in that group, mm -hmm they have passed their 10 years. Wow, and they're still and they're still on board with us, and right now they already started their other rung to raise funds for another house. Wow. Hand in hand ministries and smart building homes together. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming in. Um, I know that you said you have the expos coming in for more promotions and so forth. We're gonna be following up on the new partner <laughs> in guinea grass um and see how you guys continue to to move forward but thank you and congratulations thank, thank you for you having too. us we are going to take another quick break but when we come back i have the promo right here yes, sabrina it's we'll all about the go see tour uh, they were showing Sabrina and some of our other uh, Channel 5 uh, staff members here destinations in Belize that you can enjoy during the Easter vacation, such as Ray Key. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Silk Key, Placencia, and most of the southern coast. So you want to experience it all with Go Sea Tours. Join us. We'll be right back. Municipal elections 2024 are just around the corner and Channel 5 has you covered. The results of this decisive event will determine the direction taken by seven towns and two cities over the course of the next three years. Join us for nationwide election coverage with impartial and insightful commentary and up-to-date statistics. With correspondence in every municipality, get a first-hand look at the pulse of the nation as the elections unfold and while they can have their say this is my projection nine nine municipalities and it is not far-fetched we are going to go blue 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 down the line the voters will have their way tune in to channel 5 at 6 a.m on wednesday march 6th and stay with us until the winners are confirmed stay up to date with our pre-election coverage on news 5 open your eyes and on our social media pages. Meet the candidates, follow them on the campaign trail and have your say on the elections through our social media polls because your voice matters. Don't miss the excitement and drama of the municipal elections 2024. Tune in to Channel 5 and join us for unrivaled coverage that puts you in the heart of the action.
here on the tropical paradise of Placencia, Belize, where the water is crystal clear, the sun is still shining, and the snorkeling is world class. Join us on an aquatic adventure with Go See Tours. So let me head in, grab my fins, slap on some sunscreen, and head out. <laughs> Thank you. We offer diving, snorkeling, Monkey River, and um, fishing. Uh, tell me what makes uh, Go Sea Tours particularly uh, unique and, and different from the rest in terms of what it provides. Um, Go Sea Tours, we have some of the most experienced guides in the village. The guide's experience makes Go Sea different from everybody. All right, so where are we headed today? We're heading to Silky and then do some snorkeling there and then All right. to Reiki for lunch. All right, so what are the, the things that we can expect to see on this aquatic um, experience? The first snorkel, a lot of nice reef fish. Uh-huh. Parrotfish, angel, butterfly, some nice corals. And on the second snorkel, you see some turtles, some stingrays, and some nurse sharks. Ah. Friendly sharks. We're at, currently at the Garden Split Silky Marine Reserve, which is located about um, 20 miles due east of Placentia Village at the main barrier reef. What's significant about this island? Um, this island, you have a lot of beautiful corals, reef fish, and the main part, or the main attraction is the little area we call the turtle area, where we normally see some nurse sharks and stingrays and loggerhead turtle. So you get to actually snorkel with them, get in the water with them, swim around, and that's like the main attraction out here. Our guide Stephen boasts over a decade of experience as a tour guide. And what makes his job exceptional is that, for the most part, it doesn't feel like work. Beyond facilitating memorable tourism experiences, Stephen is aware of the pivotal role he and his pairs play in advocating for the conservation of our invaluable marine resources. The um, park rangers, they protect the area since it's a marine reserve mm -hmm. and it's a no-take zone, so you can't take any fish, you can't take corals that are alive, so they're here to police the area, make sure no one is uh, poaching around. And the significance of it being a marine reserve, could you expand on that? Um, it's very important because like, um, especially we're close to Honduras and they come in and poach. And the reason they come in is because there's no more fish left over there. And if, if we're, we're not enforcing over here, mm -hmm. then we'll be the same with no fish and no corals. And stuff. Is, this one, is this one of your favorite uh, spots to bring uh, tourists yeah, and locals? This definitely is one of the favorite along with Laughing Bird Key. All right, well. okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm certainly looking forward to getting that experience of snorkeling. Uh, yeah. Is there any particular thing that you hope for us to see today? Um, not one thing specifically, but everything. Okay. Because everything is beautiful. I like yeah. fish, corals, and when we go to the other spot, the nurse sharks. All righty. Yeah. Well, let's get going. Let's get going. <laughs>
right, we are officially back from quite an exhilarating experience. Go See Tours made us really see things that you wouldn't normally see on a just a regular day to the beach. I saw many types of fish. We even spotted a dolphin. But of course, the fun does not stop yet. We continue on to another location where the sights might just be sharks. All right, we are here at Turtle Reef. And as the name suggests, we are hoping to see some turtles. We just moved from our first location where we spotted several types of fish and even a dolphin. This time around, we're hoping to see the bigger ones, including turtles, stingrays, and maybe even sharks. Our last stop, Reiki, is a captivating tropical gem with a private resort, offering a serene and exclusive escape. The island's name, Ray, takes on a delightful dual significance as a nod to the captivating marine life that graces its surrounding waters. Uh, we're located uh, 18 miles offshore Placencia Village. Um, our island is about 7.4 acres, we're open to the public and we are private as well for our resident guests only. So for our day trippers, we, um, we have uh, the beginning, the front of our island is open to our day trippers. So that includes you know, our restaurant and bar, our lionfish bar and grill, um, the pool over here, any of the beaches on the, uh, the uh, arriving part of our island, that half. Uh, we also have a full service dive shop here. We have a few uh, gift shops as well. Beautiful beaches, a beautiful fringe reef around our island as well. Um, a really cool south dock with a salt water slide and it's a beautiful spot to get in the water for snorkeling. We have beautiful vibrant coral reefs out here. Surrounded by a picturesque setting that captivates every gaze, the ambience and aquatic surroundings create an irresistibly tranquil atmosphere. Mayenne expressed the team's commitment to maintaining the space's timeless beauty, emphasizing the importance of preserving its pristine charm. Uh, one of our slogans is, uh, imagine the Caribbean before it got crowded. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so beautiful out here is because we're very close to our uh, marine reserve in the area, the Silk Keys. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have that uh, barrier reef there protecting us from um, the big waves from outside the reef. So we keep it really pretty here, nice and beautiful, so we can uh, showcase Belize um, before the crowd got here, you know what I mean? Wrapping up our action-packed day, we cruise back to the coast with Steven, our trusty guide, ensuring a smooth ride. And true to his word, it was indeed a pleasant journey. Back on land, we express our gratitude for the unforgettable experience. Lopez shared that it's all he could hope for from every person that books a tour with Go See. A chance to see Belize and return. Yeah, I would like to see in the future our kids could come and have the same beauty and future generations to come. Wow, you that look like you had a, so much awesome fun. Awesome day, uh, April. It was I wish so you took amazing. me with you. It looks Girl, so much we fun. We wanted to because uh, here's the thing, right? Uh, before we, when we were planning this trip, I, I found out that I would be snorkeling, and if anyone knows me, they know. You, you're from Bali, you can't swim? I can't swim, girl. So I was not excited about it. Oh, it um, looked like such a blast. If you, would have been, if you were wondering who was the male there partaking in some of the activities, I brought along my little cousin to, to take <laughs> on the stunts that I wouldn't do. So he went down the big, the big slide, slide at Reiki. Uh -huh. He did some of the snorkeling at the Turtle Reef because 
I, there's just some things that I cross you know, the line. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I, I now I understand the floaties. Yeah, that's I get, exactly. I get that now. Who but does it, snorkeling with a with a life jacket? Well, do. Sabrina does. <laughs> but it looked like so much fun. And of course, want to say a big thank you to Go See Tours exactly. uh, for assisting us with taking us to Reiki. Yes. All of these wonderful ideas, and we'll be coming up with other wonderful ideas yeah. as we come closer to the Easter holiday. The places that you can go and adventure yeah. right here. At yeah, Maine. I want to give. A special thank you to our tour guide uh, over the weekend when we took that feature, Steven Lopez. He is one of the most senior uh, dive and snorkeling guides there at Go See Tours. We also had uh, Justin. I think he's one of the uh, one of the owners there at Go See Tours, and they were just they were so so welcoming. He also accommodated us on the trip, so we had a fantastic time. Looking forward to more of your adventures. Yes, it's so Sabrina. great. And we have much more activities yes. that you can do come Easter. So look out for that. Uh, uh, Go See Tours is one of the main tour operating companies that I would recommend if you want to uh, have an official guide with you when you take your trips this Easter weekend. And also check out Reiki because while it's a private island known to host uh, tourists, they also have special offers for Belizeans locals as well so definitely Wonderful. check them out all right that about wraps up the show for this morning it was a fun friday it was. and i want to say a big thank you to all of our guests for coming by having these wonderful conversations with us and of course hyping up everything belizean made it is march 1st yes. sabrina and we want to say a big happy birthday to you if it is your birthday today we wish you many many more if you have a birthday shout out or just a question or a comment you can drop us a line right here at oye at channel 5 belize.com you can also catch us on Facebook at Open Your Eyes BZ. And catch our highlights on Instagram at OYE Belize. Before we take off, we did have a giveaway during our Stan Creek Ecumenical College segment. They're celebrating 50 years uh, in the making and being in existence here. And so we want to say uh, that the winner, they had the question of who was Ecumenical College's first principal and the winner was uh is woolrich mckenzie woolrich mckenzie come on over to channel 5 studios to pick up your surprise package courtesy of stan creek ecumenical college join us again on monday when you open your eyes to start your morning right be sure to keep your eyes your minds and your hearts open we'll see you soon have a wonderful weekend Belize. bye, bye. Open Your Eyes was brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank.